Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we are going to be checking in with some horror game news as we take a look at a newly formed developer known as Section 9 Interactive and their mysterious game project. The reason why this sci-fi themed horror game and its developer caught my eye is because they are formed from ex-members of Tarsia Studios, the creative minds behind the Little Nightmares franchise. In fact, let me read you all an introductory description found on the Section 9 website, for which a link can be found in the description below this video. Section 9 Interactive is an independent video game studio located in Malmö, Sweden. We are a small team with long experience in the game industry, previously working in leading roles on titles such as Little Nightmares, Little Nightmares 2 and Little Big Planet PS Vita. Our ambition is to use our combined skills and passion to create world-class games with compelling visuals and interesting worlds to explore. We are hard at work on a new sci-fi action adventure title for PC and next generation consoles. So there you have it, while unnamed, this new sci-fi project is coming from some key talent behind the Little Nightmares game series, and I think you'll agree, the influence and style is fairly obvious. This unnamed project shares a somewhat similar art direction, typically moody lighting, enchanting animation work and some terrifying enemy encounters. But with very little information given, we are left with only a handful of very cool looking GIFs to analyse in order to work out what exactly this new project is all about. Therefore, for the remainder of this video, I will take a look at each of these teasers published so far and break down what is shown in each. The first image released focuses on our main protagonist, who appears to be female judging by their overall build and the little we see of their face. This woman wears a helmet which resembles the headwear of an astronaut or diver, hinting the world we traverse will not feature breathable air and we will potentially be exploring an alien planet. It seems this planet is hostile as we see our character carrying two weapon types a sidearm in hand which resembles a pistol of some kind and a more powerful but likely slower secondary weapon in the form of a rifle slung over her shoulder. Also notice the device strapped to the woman's chest. Perhaps there will be moments where our character communicates with the rest of her team or maybe intercepts alien broadcasts, adding to the scare factor. The second teaser actually backs up the assumption that this game will take place on an alien world and also that we will communicate with a team of fellow explorers throughout our adventure. In this shot, our character leads a group of other humans across a monolithic bridge. We can see a squad member at the back scanning the facility with their flashlight. Several of the team carry supplies on their backs in enormous containers. They head to a beacon at the centre of the bridge, perhaps a method of saving the game and communicating with our ship. The tweet accompanying this video states, Discover a world riddled with mystery and danger. Other tags include Unreal Engine 4, confirming this is being built on the same game engine as Little Nightmares, and more interestingly, that this is an action RPG and may be influenced by the open-ended and exploration-themed design of the Metroid games, which means a far less linear experience than we saw during our time with Six on the Moor. The next teaser is found beneath the statement, the right equipment is essential when exploring new places. It shows our protagonist making her way through a spore infested ventilation shaft. The giant fan at the back has been jammed up with alien webs and the floor and walls are coated in nests belonging to giant alien like parasites. These begin to hatch as we pass through, and it seems some have already been dispatched. Interestingly, that communication device seems to double down as a scanner. Here it is being used to light up the darkness ahead and shoot up multiple lasers to pick up dangerous activity. It is likely the beam changes from blue to red when danger is detected. This device may also be used to scan enemies in order to discover background on them and potential weak spots during combat, much like in the Metroid Prime game series. A grappling hook is nice to have, states the next tweet. 
We see this hook in action as our heroine leaps gracefully across the gap in this destroyed bridge. There's not too much to say about this one, other than it seems we will have access to a grappling hook and it will be able to attach to key points in the environment, such as these highlighted power boxes. It is likely the grapple will be used for not only traversal, but also for escaping the game's many creatures out to get us. The next tweet exclaims, a weapon is good for survival. Truer words were never spoken when facing off against enemies such as this guy. This is our first good look at one of Section 9's haunting creature designs. It seems almost plant-like, a bulb-like head splitting open to reveal a giant's mouth and long elongated neck that thrashes about wildly as the enemy staggers closer to our hapless explorer. Tendrils burst from the creature's back as it is blasted by the sidearm. In the sixth teaser video, we find the explorer has discovered a secret room containing a loot chest. The tweet confirms this with the phrase, secrets and loot. It looks like a hole has been blown in the wall here, suggesting this room was previously sealed and explosives must be used to gain access. This also tells us chests and loot are a core gameplay mechanic within Section 9's project. Personally, I'm hoping these contain both world lore and suit and weapon upgrades. It would be really neat to unlock new skills and equipment as we explore this world, allowing for backtracking to access previously unreachable areas and kill once unbeatable foes. Teaser 7 leads directly on from Teaser 6 in that it confirms our character will indeed carry explosives used for blowing holes in certain walls to gain access to new areas and paths. In fact, this is confirmed by the tweet accompanying it which states, explosives are useful for finding new paths. Again, this confirms a more open and explorable design than found in the team's previous work with Little Nightmares. Mechanical watchers protect a dead world, a chilling statement found above this creepy looking video. It shows a robot walking about on all fours, like some kind of cybernetic dog, using a sensor ray to scope out potential targets in the vents ahead. We see it is lit up red, and as previously mentioned, this seems to happen during an enemy alert status. Now back to that statement, mechanical watchers protect a dead world. This suggests this world was once colonised, potentially by humans or an advanced alien race who built these robots to defend them against… something. Now wiped out, the world is overrun by parasites and the creators seem to be gone, but their mechanical weapons still run rampant, defaulting into a constant state of hostility. My theory is that the alien parasite infected the race who colonised this planet and built these robots, transforming them into the hideous creatures we saw earlier during the combat teaser analysis. Because of this, the robots defaulted to a safe state, where they automatically wipe out anything they deem hostile. Unfortunately, this now also includes our band of intrepid explorers. Teaser 9 shows this dog-like enemy in action. It uses the core on its head to fire out a devastating laser beam attack. Our character is very nimble and can roll up the way with ease, confirming a dodge capability is built into the combat gameplay loop. It also seems the weak point for these robots is in fact the core on their head, which means timing our attacks perfectly just before they fire off an attack of their own. The final image is one of the coolest and most grotesque of all. It shows a giant cluster of enemies which have formed an enormous walking death ball. In fact, the way these plant-like creatures mould together and mutate reminds me heavily of The Last of Us and the clicker monster designs found in those games. In fact, as we separate off a cluster of smaller monsters, you can clearly see a wave of poisonous spores dissipate into the surrounding air. It's likely we'll want to steer clear of these spores even with our helmet on. The blurb above this gif reads as follows. It's easy to get swarmed by numerous threats that lie in wait. It will be interesting to see how many of these larger cluster type enemies show up, or if this is perhaps a one-off boss encounter. 
Once again, notice how these infected look decidedly humanoid in form. Again, reinforcing the theory that this facility was once run by humans and perhaps our team has travelled to this world to investigate a loss in communication, mimicking the narrative found in classic sci-fi movies such as Alien. With that said, we have come to the end of this analysis of the mysterious new sci-fi horror game from former members of the Little Nightmares team. I'll certainly be keeping a keen eye on the progress of this game and rest assured we'll be keeping you all updated when more substantial news surfaces in the future. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave me a like, comment down below and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.